morning. I'm Mayor Tommy Roberts. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. My guest this morning is Mr. Arvin Trujillo, who is the Manager of Government Relations for Four Corners Power Plant, Arizona Public Service. Arvin, welcome to the Mayor's Table. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Glad to be here. Arvin, there's been a lot going on at uh, the power plants here locally, both at Four Corners Power Plant and at San Juan Generating Station. Mm -hmm. A lot of news, uh, a lot of it not very good news from my perspective as a mayor of a local community yeah. that derives a lot of benefits from the jobs that are uh, created and that exist as a result of the operation of those two, or two power plants. And if we go back uh, about three years ago, we can talk about an event, an agreement that has resulted in the closing down of units at uh, Four Corners Power Plant. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the result of an Environmental Protection Agency rule referred to as the Hayes Rule. That's correct. That required Arizona Public Service as the primary owner of Four Corners Power Plant to install what is referred to as selective catalytic reduction pollution control mm -hmm. technologies. So I want to start there with our viewers. Uh, can you go back and just re very briefly summarize that um, EPA ruling? Sure thing, Mr. Mayor. Again, the Hayes Rule was a part of the, uh, the Clean Air Act. And what, we, what uh, was happening at that point in time was the federal government and the state governments were working on putting together a rule to control the emissions of NOx, nitrous oxides. And really, there hadn't been that much work done on it. Then, uh, with the Obama administration coming in, they, they made it uh, uh, one of their priorities to get that, that rule up and operating. As a result of that, uh, the federal government, US EPA, came out with rulings uh, looking at what they believe should be the uh, standards we should follow as far as uh, the removal of NOx. And again, what they're looking to do is to control the amount of emissions of, of this gas so that it limits the haze. And we have a number of, of what we call class one recreational sites like Mesa Verde, Grand Canyon, uh, Monument Valley, these areas which they feel would be affected by haze. As a result of that, uh, they came up with some very stringent rules that which would have made it very difficult for the power plant to continue operating. We then went into negotiations with US EPA and we came up with what we call the consent decree. As a result of that decree, we indicated that we would shut down our three smaller units and decommission those. And then we would go ahead and uh, retrofit uh, the SCRs, known as the Selectic uh, Catalytic Reduction Equipment, onto our two larger units, four and five. And we would have that in place and operational by July of 2018. And so that brings us to the point where we are now. Yes. Um, Arizona Public Service is in the process of uh, preparing to install that pollution control technology. And it's very mm -hmm. expensive, by the way. Yes. Uh, it's very yes. expensive. And we, we may talk about that here in a few minutes. but. But uh, the three units have been decommissioned. They've been shut down. Is That's that correct? correct? That's correct. And so the next step is the major overhaul of the two remaining units, units four and five. Uh, and uh, we want to talk about the economic impact uh, that, that that work will have on the community. But let's, let's go back uh, another step and let's talk about the decommissioning of the three units. And I want you to talk a bit about the impact on jobs uh, at the mine and at the plant, uh, the Navajo okay. mine which served the plant, and then the, uh, the impact on jobs at the plant that came as a result of the decommissioning of those three units. You know, th there was a, a fair amount of impact as a result of coming to that, that agreement. By shutting down the three units, we, in essence, uh, derated our power plant by 560 megawatts. And by doing that, we've, uh, we are, are anticipating at this point cutting down our overall uh, employment uh, down to about 300 and we're looking about 320, 300 to 320 employees there at the plant once everything's up and operational, which in its heyday, Four Corners had upwards of about 550 employees. Right. 
so there's that impact. Also, with the derating from by 560 megawatts, that means also a decrease in the amount of coal we require from Navajo Mine. And that amounts to about, in round figures, about a million and a half uh, tons of coal required to continue operations with our two larger units. Now, those two units combined, we are still uh, generating uh, 1,540 megawatts of power coming from the plant. And so with that, both Four Corners Power Plant and Navajo Mine will, will eventually see a decrease in the number of employees uh, because of the fact that we're not producing as much electricity. Therefore, we don't need as much uh, a coal to and be brought that, into and the that, area. And um, that definitely has a direct impact on the local com communities. There are uh, significant wages paid for those jobs. Uh, I've, I've heard that uh, each of those jobs is worth about $100,000 a piece. That's now. correct. So if you lose 300 jobs, uh, that's about $30 million of lost wages uh, into the surrounding communities. And yes. It's a loss of buying power. And that has a dramatic impact on there, the local there, economy. There is uh, impact, and we're still trying to gauge that right now. And it's when we have really started looking at the derating and the uh, retrofit of the SCRs and what we would have to do, we began to combine the information because if you remember also, uh, Mayor, we were in the processes of getting a lease renewed. We were going through the EIS process uh, with that. And we calculated at that point in time, we were generating about $325 million a year annually coming from both operations. Now with the decrease, we still don't have a good feel yet as to what that number will be. But once we get that uh, developed, we'll be able to, to share with everybody uh, what we're looking at as far as that's concerned. But on another note, uh, to show how, uh, how much uh, APS as well as the other owners are dedicating themselves towards this, uh, this effort, in order for us to consent to or meet uh, the consent decree requirements, we took over Southern Cal Edison's portion uh, in the plant uh, we did renegotiations with the Navajo Nation and looking at the, uh, the purchase of the SCRs, w the owners of Four Corners Power Plant are going to be putting in uh, about a billion dollars into this plant in order for it to continue operations. We're going to have uh, the ability to operate through 2041, but unfortunately too, we have a coal sale agreement with the Navajo Nation up through 2031. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we'll be going back into negotiations in 2028, and we'll see where things are at that point. Because as you're well aware, we don't have a crystal ball to see how coal is going to be looking at that point and what its positioning will be at that juncture in time. So and you've got, you've got some ownership issues as well that, that are going to have to be uh, worked out. I know Public Service Company in New Mexico as an owner uh, in the plant operations, they're saying they're going to be totally out of coal by 2031, I believe. Mm -hmm. So those will those will create some issues that have to be addressed at that time. Let's uh, let's focus a little bit on the work that's going to begin with the overhaul of the two remaining units. I want to talk about the economic impact that uh, that work will have in our community, and that work is going to be begin right away, uh, as I understand it. Yes, uh, we right now we're looking. Uh, at Unit 5, one of our larger units, going down on September, I believe it's September 19th. That'd be tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking at uh, uh, about a three-month, about a 95-day uh, shutdown of that uh, unit in order to get all the equipment retrofitted onto uh, that unit. Once that's completed, we'll begin the startup processes on that particular unit. And then we're going to immediately shut down Unit 4. And we're anticipating that happening in December of this year. And uh, we'll start the retrofit process on that unit beginning in December. We anticipate that being completed by April of next year. That gives us until from April to July to make sure we've got everything running and, and moving as, as, as a as predicted in terms of uh, the emissions and its overall operation. 
uh, by July of next year, which is when the consent decree is, is required to be met. And that uh, means that there are going to be about seven to eight months of a lot of activity out at the plant. So uh, how, many, how many contractors will be, uh, or subcontractors, how many people will actually be employed in that seven to eight month long process? Well, right now, uh, the total cost of construction of putting uh, these units uh, in line with the consent decree is going to be about $625 million. Uh, we will have upwards of 1,600 subcontractors and contractors on site. So we're preparing for that right now because we're, it's going to be like a little anthill there. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people working, doing a lot of different things because, uh, as indicated, we've got until July of next year to get these units uh, up and performing with the new environmental equipment. We've got a lot of uh, uh, folks working on getting the supplies and the equipment into the plant area. We've, uh, in order to uh, accommodate lay down areas for this new equipment and uh, these new supplies that will be put on there, we have totally removed units one, two, and three. So the stacks, everything is gone. Mm -hmm. And so we're cleaning that area up and we're gonna use that as a part of our lay down area. If you look into the, the distance and look at the plant, you'll see that we've erected three cranes in the area so again all of that's going to be utilized to to get the equipment on board uh and while we're doing all of this work the plant's going to still be operating right so of that 1600 people who will be involved in in this transformation process how many of those would be new to our community how many will be coming from outside our area and working temporarily here you know uh right now we're anticipating uh, at least half of those folks will be coming in new. Right now we're working with the Navajo Nation to find ways to uh, accommodate Navajos uh, for those positions, but even there we'll, we'll have uh, uh, different skilled labor coming from different parts of the reservation. Uh, so again, we're looking at uh, how we can do this. Uh, we're looking for people, or I should say the contractors are looking for experienced people because quite frankly, with the time frame that we have in place, it's gonna be difficult to try to find new people who are just learning how to come on board rather than getting experienced people in place so that we can meet the, the uh, goals that we have in place. A lot of those people, I assume, would be staying in hotels and motels in Farmington, <laughs> yeah, the surrounding areas. Yeah, we've got that. We've got people who are uh, looking for, I'm, I'm sure they're looking for areas to, to haul their trailers in. Right. Uh, a lot of these guys, uh, some, some live in campers, but they're looking for places to park their vehicles and, and have a place to stay. Uh, like I said, a lot of this is, is temporary work, so you have people coming in at points in time and then they leave and then they come back. And so again, we're working that whole process through to make sure we've got everybody badged in and we've got all the security checks in place. Uh, just a huge operation yeah. that we're looking at. But yeah, we're looking at a lot of people coming in. And they're, they're going to be spending money on uh, goods and services, entertainment. Uh, that's what we're hoping that, yeah. you know, uh, that's one of the benefits we hope that the local community will be able to enjoy is that as we've invested in the plant and we've bringing uh, new opportunities into the plant area, that by getting this construction work done, it's an opportunity for the whole community to benefit from this. And of course, uh, these are temporary jobs. We, we'd much prefer those permanent uh, high paying jobs, but these are temporary and they're good paying jobs. Uh, so they, they'll provide an economic bump to our community. And I think we, we have to appreciate that as well. And one thing that we're looking at too is we're using a new technology. And so we are also going to, we're exploring right now how to deal with that because one of the ingredients that we've got to put into this whole process is ammonia. Mm -hmm. And it's just not safe to transport anhydrous or pure ammonia because if you were to have an accident, uh, that uh, chemical is very uh, volatile, uh, very hazardous. But what we're looking at is utilizing urea, which is a... Uh, a neutral compound by which you can generate uh, ammonia. So we're looking at ways that we might be able to uh, manufacture that in the local area, bring that onto the plant site, and then manufacture 
ammonia for the whole process. So there's some, some new technology coming into this. Our local economic development organization has been working uh, 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 aggressively to try to find a way to bring a urea manufacturing plant into the area. So I, it's good to hear that that's still in the discussion stages and maybe we're well on the way to doing that. So Larvin, I want to thank you for uh, being my guest uh, this morning on the sure mayor's thing. table. I think this is information that a lot of people be interested in, in knowing and having. I think it's, uh, it's exciting in a way to think about all of that activity out there. Again, we'd like for our jobs to be permanent in nature, but, uh, but these are jobs nonetheless, and, and they'll prevent or they'll uh, provide an economic boost to our local economy for a period of time. So it's just good information to have, and uh, thank you for being with me this morning. Sure thing, Mr. Barrett. Again, thank you for everybody's uh, attention, and glad to be here. We want to thank all of you for joining us once again on the Mayor's Table, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next Monday.